Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 117. Welcome to the show. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn everything about knives and knife collecting and dive deep into the world of knives. And we've got another great show this midweek episode. Uh, Going to, of course, talk just a little bit about knife rights and their ultimate steel that's going on. And Bob gets to uh, talk about one of his gift knives that he got from uh, from that fundraiser. We've also got a listener letter that Bob will eloquently read to <laughs> us the, about a, a listener's experience. Uh, knife Life News, we're going to be uh, talking about uh, Benchmade, uh, ZT with a new slip joint, and uh, Something Obscene Company. We're going to talk about the something from the Something Obscene Company uh, that we're going to be talking about. Also, we're going to uh, talk about Bob's state of the collection, the new Emerson Appalachian that he's received. We're going to be discussing that. Also, the Finch Runtley. Is that correct? We're going to be That's talking correct. about Finch Runtley. All right. We can't look for, uh, can't wait, and look forward to hearing what that's all about. And also give a quick uh, promotion for tomorrow night's Thursday night knives when we're going to be talking uh, a lot about Emerson knives. So another full show this week, Bob, episode one seventeen. That's right. Surprise, surprise. We're going to be talking Emersons. You know, I've been talking a lot lately about Emersons. You have, and you've been getting a couple lately. So uh... I, I have. Well, I, I've been, I've been. Uh... Uh, being, I've been fortunately running into a lot of good deals, or, or maybe unfortunately. I love I it when that happens. No, <laughs> uh, but I, I got another new knife I want to talk about, and I got it from our donation, the uh, podcast donation to the Ultimate Steel, the fundraiser for knife rights. And uh, so we sent in five hundred bucks. You know, we've been talking about that. We auctioned off five hundred sixty. The- 560 bucks. <laughs> we uh, that. <laughs> thank you. The Emerson CQC Super Emerson. Let's see. Emerson Super CQC7 that uh, uh, that Just our good friends right off your tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> that our good friend Stu sent us from Stone and Steel, and then Bob Terzuola himself sent us a book, a knife, and one of his beautifully milled titanium cap lifters uh, with his with his uh, dragon logo. And we auctioned all that off, made five hundred sixty bucks, and sent it to the Ultimate Steel. And um, wouldn't you know it, uh, at the $500 level, all of the thank you knives were, you know, gone because there are a lot of generous uh, knife rights givers out there. And they were they were giving out, uh, let's see, for a $500 level, they were giving Cold Steel AD 10s. Hmm. Uh, and so naturally, those were all gone because people love that knife. Right. Uh, but I was I was very, uh, you know, very touched that that uh, Knife rights, in any case, still sent out a knife to me, and they sent me the the Sog Terminus XR mm. as a thank you gift, and uh, it's got a sharper future knife rights etched in on the blade. It's their it's their logo, and um, I love it. I, it's a it's a really great keepsake, and and uh, I'm very happy to have it. And as you know, recently I've been uh, experimenting with a lot of the new Sogs, and right. and consistently impressed, and this. Terminus XR. I'm going to make a review video of this because I think this makes an excellent EDC. Uh, there might be a thing or two I change, but they're minor, like the ramp on the on the uh, pocket clip. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm gonna. I will be making a review video of this, but uh, definitely, definitely give to uh, Ultimate Steel if you can. This is kind of a tough season to ask for it. Tough time time in the world history to ask for it, but uh, if you can do it, definitely do it because. Uh, we can walk around with these knives now because of uh, Doug Ritter. Right. Well, the uh, Knife Rights Organization, of course, de- definitely uh, uh, needs your support and your fundraising. It's their big Ultimate Steel fundraising event. Uh, you can learn more about that at KnifeRights.org or in your favorite search engine, just uh, search Ultimate Steel 2020, and uh, that should be the uh, first result you get. You mentioned the uh, SOG knives. Uh, Bob, the SOG brand vice president, Jonathan Wegner, was on episode 112 mm-hmm. of the Knife Junkie podcast. So, uh, folks, if they haven't heard that, can find that at thenifejunkie.com slash 112, thenifejunkie.com slash 112. Jim, I, I, I got a, an email I, I wanted to read. Mm, okay. And 
I read it to you before, and you find it interesting, and this man's from your home state. Yeah. North and I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, Scott sent a letter saying you asked about our favorite knives, and he actually sent in a great letter telling me about his favorite knife. Uh, I am 53 years old, and I have carried a knife in my front right pocket since I was about nine years old. My grandfather collected and traded knives at a country store where he and a bunch of other old guys would gather, drink coffee, and shoot the bull. I love the new knives, the bling, the new shapes, designs, but I always go back to my favorite, the original Case Copperhead. It is discontinued, and they only offer the baby Copperhead now, so I only bu- uh, so I buy old ones on eBay and a website called All About Pocket Knives. I have my original uh, that my dad gave me when I was 15, have skinned hundreds of catfish, some deer, and peeled tons of apples and oranges with that knife. A close second is the Queen Three Blade Whittler with the number 48 blade. Check that one out. I swear I almost cried when I heard Queen closed in 2018. So I have probably about 100 knives of all types, i.e. Benchmade, Spyderco, Protech, Microtech, but I always go back to my traditional knives, Case, Queen, Boker, Robeson, Schott, and Morgan. I love the podcast and the YouTube content. Keep it up. Thanks, Scott. All right. Well, thanks, Scott. We we will definitely keep up the content, but thanks so much for uh, for the letter. That's pretty cool. And uh, I love the country store reference because uh, my relatives were from uh, eastern North Carolina, and I remember as a young child going to the country store right there in the neighborhood with the old wooden creaky floors and the old, you know, the, the old <laughs> cool. soda, uh, you know, mach- uh, machines and the, you know, the candy out on the, on the counter and that type thing. Uh, uh, um, I think it was a wood, uh, uh, what do you call it? Tall, I forget the belly, you know, it's like a wood stove right there in the oh, middle yeah, of the yeah. old country store and the, uh, the country guys sitting around shooting the, the bull around the, the, the fire, wood fire heater right there in the middle of the country store. Yeah, so that brings back kind of fond memories for me. So yeah, the uh, I, I love the idea of kind of going back to whatever your your roots are, mm. or or what your original tastes are. What really brought you into the knife right. thing in the first place? And and for so many of us, it's these great old slip joints. Uh, right. So you know, as you know, Jim, I come in and out of my slip joint obsession phases, but I always have them. They're always on my desk. They're always getting used. Uh, all, there's always one in the junk drawer too, you know. Never know when you need it. Yeah. Well, Scott, thanks again for the uh, kind letter and the kind words and uh, the story. Uh, I could just, I could visually see it uh, as <laughs> as Bob was reading it. So thank you for that. Uh, if you've got a story or if you want to follow up as as Scott did and contact Bob, shoot him an email at bob at thenifejunkie dot com. Or if you don't mind your voice actually being heard. You can call the listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487, and leave us a message on the listener line. And uh, by doing so, uh, we'll be able to uh, take that and then play that here on the Knife Junkie podcast for other folks to listen to. But either email or voicemail, we would definitely love to hear from you, yeah. get some feedback, and uh, get some nice stories from you. That's, uh, that's the cool part, really. Yeah, and if you call the listener line, you don't have to hear it read in my voice. We will get to hear the story in your own voice, which <laughs> right. is, you know, we're, how we should hear it. So right. uh, that'd be great. And probably better. <laughs> Ooh, Way better. Ba-dum-bum. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Well, I'm going to say finally, finally, Benchmade. Benchmade, who makes amazing automatic knives and also amazing other knives, has finally come out with the automatic 940. So uh, I just, I, I, we mentioned it on Thursday Night Knives, Jim. You remember we had a, a, quite a conversation about it. But the uh, Benchmade 940 is probably their most, uh, you know, besides the Griptilian or up there with the Griptilian, their most emblematic knife. Uh, it is the, uh, the, the prototypical Benchmade. And uh, they've come out with many inter- iterations with carbon fiber and S90V and um, G10 and different color barrel spacers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this, to me, is a real uh, leap. This, to me, is something that was needed. As you know, I'm not the hugest 940 fan. You might be able to hear it in my voice. I had one, and and I liked it, but not enough to keep it. Mm. And um, 
something about the design has always been awkward to me. And I know it's an unpopular stance. Uh, but for some reason, I look at the 9400, the 9400, which is right. the 940 automatic. Right. And it just looks right. It looks right. It doesn't look awkward to me. And it looks like it, it, this is the ultimate culmination of the design. I mean, that's just my uninformed opinion uh, on a knife that I'm not crazy about. But to me, this 940, 9400 automatic is something I would like to have. What uh, Does it look that different than the 940? Because I'm looking at the 9400 yeah. auto, uh -huh. uh, um, and I, I like it. I like the looks of it. It looks almost... It, there, there's almost no difference. The only thing we don't see is the the presence of the axis lock. Um, but I don't know, Jim. Maybe maybe it's the I don't know. Maybe it's just that, or or maybe uh, I'm coming around to the idea of the design with the spring in it. I never really cared for the blade or how the handle transitions into the blade. I always felt like mm. there was a little bit of something under my thumb I didn't want uh, if I put my so. You know, it's all a personal preference thing, but I right. see this and it and it makes me excited. Just kind of like how uh, there's a new sprint run uh, that Spyderco's come out with where they put the wave, the Emerson wave on the paramilitary too. And it looks great. And it, it to me, yes, finally, the paramilitary too has has really, uh, I don't know, to me, this is the uh, this is the way it should look kind of like with the 940. But mm -hmm. again, like I said, I mean. You're talking to someone who who almost doesn't care because those knives are are great knives, but they're just not my faves, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I almost don't care, but I see the Emerson right. Wave Paramilitary Two, or I see this new Benchmade ninety four hundred automatic, and mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I want that version of that knife. Well, maybe it just has taken you twenty years or so to get used to the design. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe it has been around a while, right? That is that is true, and you know uh, both. Uh, I don't know. I think both designs are just slightly awkward in their in their actual uh, in their in their native form. So mm -hmm. maybe just the slight design tweaks have uh, brought it around to my eye. And as we know, I I admit readily, I'm I'm being superficial about it. I'm looking at it. I'm not holding them. Well, that's going to be uh, coming out uh, later this year. The uh, Knife News article didn't indicate uh, a date on that, but uh, the Benchmade 9400 Auto Osborne uh, going to be available sometime uh, later this year. So, okay, uh, you've listened. If you're if you're still listening, you've heard me talk about this, and and quite possibly some of you've been talking to your speakers, talking to your headphones, saying, "Geez, would you shut up about the 940? It's a great knife. You don't know what you're talking about." So, if you feel that way, please let me know kindly, uh, <laughs> and and I, <laughs> I want to know how people feel about the 940, and please be honest. Sit on the edge of your bed, you know, close your eyes, look deep into your heart and tell me if you think that isn't an awkward design. And if it isn't, let me know why. Mm -hmm. oh, well, there you heard it. You've got Bob's invite to in, uh, email him at bob at com, or call the listener line and uh, give him your feedback nicely, as he said, uh, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. All right, Bob, moving on in uh, Knife Life News, uh, ZT, Zero Tolerance, and... Um, Yen Zanzo? Gen okay, I, couldn't pr I didn't, f didn't know how to pronounce it, so I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I think it's Yen's. It, it, it makes, We're going to go with that. Yeah, yeah, it sounds better. Uh, so, yes, they just recently, um, I guess it was last November, they came out with the 0230, the first slip joint knife uh, made by Zero Tolerance based on the Malibu uh, custom knife by Yen Zanzo. And, you know, we had uh, Spirited Whiskey on Thursday Night Knives a few weeks back, and he actually has a custom Malibu showed that off. What a beautiful knife. So uh, ZT made their first one, the Malibu, the 00230 in November without a pocket clip with a with a sheep sheep's foot blade and uh, really, really quite a classy, classy looking knife. It's got a carbon fiber handle, uh, which I'm on the fence about, but just a really, really nice knife. So they came out with a new version of it, basically, called the 0235. And they have changed things around just a little bit. Uh, it still has the 20 CV steel. It's still 2.6 inches. Uh, but the blade itself is now a drop point. So it's got quite quite a bit of point, mm -hmm. quite a lot more point than the, than the older, uh, than the sheep's foot version, the uh, 0230. And it also has a pocket clip, uh, which is... Uh, 
uh, a nice addition. I think a lot of people uh, uh, love the old deep carry pocket clip, even if it's a uh, a slip joint. So uh, this thing, I got to say, looks beautiful. I really like the look of the sheep foot version, too. And not for nothing, but when you take the the you have the same cutting edge, same length of cutting uh, edge here. But when you round off the tip and make it a drop point instead of the uh, instead of the sort of cliff that you get from a sheep's foot, it makes the blade look smaller. It actually makes the blade to handle ratio uh, look a little lopsided. Um, but that's a trick of the eye. It's kind of all the same size of, of usable uh, blade. It's just uh, when you remove some of that material from the very front and streamline it, it makes the blade look a little bit small. But gorgeous, gorgeous knife, and uh, I'd love to check it out. But I'm not sure why they didn't make that pocket clip anodized blue like the backspacer. But, you know, I'm not Jen Zanzo, so I should just kind of shut my mouth. Well, you know, oftentimes less is more. You know, if you had if you had blue and blue, yep. it might look, eh. You know who said that? Less is more. Henri Matisse, the, the famous French painter, he said that. Okay. I thought you were going to say Bob DeMarco said it. <laughs> no, 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 no. But but you just said that, and it jolted me back to college. And oh, I'm just, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, those were great days, man. Didn't have a care in the world, did we? Oh, <laughs> no. my gosh. That was wonderful. Also didn't have all these sweet knives, though. Well, that's true. But had more money than I've ever had in my life was during college when I was working and didn't have to pay uh, didn't have to pay bills, you know, and go home on weekends and get the laundry done by mom and you know. Yeah. All <laughs> so yeah. anyway, good. You time. were such parasites then. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, I'm hoping that if you get this uh, new slip joint zero two three five because of that uh, extra sharp point on there, that you'll be careful with it because we know how you uh, love to drop knives on the on the tip there. Don't say that. Don't say that, especially with the state of the collection we're coming up on. There's a there's a tip to be broken in that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk something obscene. Uh, and did you get that uh, that kind of subtle uh, transition? <laughs> yeah, so that was good. Something obscene from the Something Obscene Company. We're talking about the Felix Fel uh, Felix Archibek. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I I, I my I, I would look at it and say uh, Archie Beck, but I don't know. I'm, uh, Question but mark? <laughs> I have been following Felix on Instagram and, and Something Obscene Company for uh, three or four years now. And he, his knives are really, really awesome. He does uh, uh, a lot of custom stuff, but in the last couple of years, he's been having some produced by we and some other uh, great OEM companies. And uh, if, if you don't know his knives, he's got a very emblematic... Uh, a logo. It's a, a lightning bolt, and sometimes you see it uh, carved into the or, or cut into the blade. Sometimes you see it uh, cut into the a pocket clip. Uh, but his designs are are muscular and uh, right up my alley. You know, uh, the first knives of his that caught my eye were these uh, beautifully uh, ground uh, compound uh, tanto blades. Um, but anyway, uh, he is now coming out with an integral version of his Nemli cleaver. Now, this is the third version, I believe, of this knife. And uh, this is the integral version, and, and we knife is making it. Integral, if you're unfamiliar with it, with the term, is when you have a, a frame lock folder, but it's all carved out of one piece of titanium. It's mm -hmm. not a, a frame side and a show side and a backspacer or standoffs holding it together it's all carved out of one piece of titanium so it oh, okay. it 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 presents a, a a challenge a huge engineering challenge though i i think companies like we are kind of dialing in on this uh it's a big en engineering challenge and also um uh, a, a lot of material gets kind of wasted you know when you're carving out a channel of titanium and just creating lots of titanium dust or what or what have you um, so they are generally more expensive and more um, valued because mm -hmm. of all the work that goes into them. And then also think about when you're putting the blade into the handle uh, and, and assembling the whole pivot area and designing the whole pivot area. When you're making a traditional or I shouldn't say traditional, when you're making a regular sort of knife and you're putting two sides together, it's easier to come up with a way to house all of the. Uh, the stop pin and all the stuff that happens around the pivot, 
but when it's integral, you have to figure out a way to kind of slip it all in and make it work. So uh, it's always a bit of an engineering challenge. So so something obscene company and and Felix is coming out with this uh, uh, with the Nemli uh, V3. And they're also partnering uh, partnering with and if you don't know what it looks like, uh, let me just before we go into the carbon mm, yeah. fiber, it's a big, nasty, cleavery, but very useful looking blade. It seems to get fatter as it goes out. Yes, yes. So it it almost uh, it's evocative of a chopper. You look at it, you it looks weight forward. Uh, though a lot of uh, steel is removed from the end of the blade with the uh, with the sort of uh, logo uh, lightning bolt there, uh, which is also a, oh, a tip yeah. of the hat to the traditional cleaver hole, you know, hanging hole that's up at the tip of the blade. So uh, it's just a really really cool design. It's a and you know the cleaver thing to me is always evocative of the past. You know, big meat cleaver hanging on the wall. Right. Uh, but then you look at that handle; it's so futuristic and graceful. And of course, it's all carved out of one piece of titanium. So, mm -hmm. very, very cool looking knife. Yeah, the picture I'm looking at uh, has a kind of a dark background, so I didn't really notice the lightning bolt, uh, mm -hmm. the, the hole. But now that you say it, I see it. So, I mean, any purpose for the hole other than hanging it or having your logo carved out of it? Well, I think it's three things. That, yeah, I think it's the logo. I think it's uh, it's it's evoking the hole that is usually at the end of a big cleaver, mm. you know. And then thirdly, I think it relieves some weight, and that's mm. that's the flat of the blade. So there is a lot of steel there. Yeah. Um, so I think it also makes it so that it's not so front heavy. Right. Or four, Probably. you could maybe pop a beer open with it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or you might be able to do a, like a spidey flick if you can get your your forefinger in there. You might be able to open it with it, but who knows? That mm. might be a little bit too far down the blade. Yeah, it looks looks kind of far. Yeah. But what a cool what a cool design, and I think a really cool company. Uh, just as I've been observing them from afar on Instagram for the last few years. Yeah, and you said something about the carbon fiber. Uh, oh yes. The um, so they are uh, partnering with Fat Carbon Fiber, and our, our good friend Alex loves Fat Carbon Fiber because they, they make you know I'm complaining about carbon fiber a lot because I don't like the uh, the regular weave. I don't like the look of the the regular weave. I like the the sort of marbled and sort of differently patterned carbon fibers. And Fat Fat Carbon, the company, that's what they specialize in. So they're going to be partnering up. Uh, with something obscene company and we and putting in uh, either black camo lava flow or arctic storm carbon fiber and i don't know what any of them look like but they all sound cool <laughs> sound cool yeah i like arctic storm yeah and lava flow i think i've seen lava flow yeah. uh, in a eugene kwan video but well some pretty uh pretty cool stories there in uh, knife life news a lot of uh, interesting stuff any of those uh on the list for the knife junkie to purchase in his near future oh geez uh i i think um maybe that bench made 9400 i mean because uh, i need to get a 940 back into the collection just to either prove me wrong or prove me right mm -hmm. and that seems like the great format and uh this something obscene company uh nemly is just the right kind of cleaver for me like mm -hmm. i'm not a huge cleaver fan but the way this looks it it almost reminds me of a chinese war sword so it's uh it's it's cleavery in the right direction. So that right. might be on the list too. All right. So two two out of three possibly to uh, put on the long list of knives for the for the knife chunky. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, speaking of knives, uh, that's a nice transition into or or new knives or knives you want to buy. A nice transition into our uh, kind of state of the collection uh, section of the show where Bob gets to talk about some of the new knives in his collection. And uh, first up, we uh, want to talk about the Emerson Appalachian that you received from uh, Slicey Dicey. Yes, yes, it came. And uh, uh, I'm very excited about it. I've been, you know, talking about this the last couple of weeks. And then I decided I would just uh, be quiet until uh, I actually received it. And uh, <laughs> A, uh, if you buy a knife from Slicey Dicey, it comes in beautiful condition and uh, with some stickers and... Uh, and the whole nine. And I got to say, this Emerson, uh, I, I'm going to do a whole, uh, I'll do a video on this, uh, a review of this, because it is an Emerson clip point Bowie, you know, and uh, he makes a lot of different Bowies. Uh, and this is one of three that I own. And it is different. It has a different, uh, the edge is different. I, I, I'm going to talk all about it 
But my first impression of it is this is the sharpest Emerson I've ever gotten. And uh, it's got the widest edge bevel of any Emerson I've gotten. And I think it's because it's a relatively thin blade. And uh, so it has to go a little bit more extreme on the edge bevel to get a nice uh, razor sharp edge. But this thing is awesome. Uh, I know I know uh, some people are 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 uh, hesitant to buy an Emerson, but man, they are making some outstanding knives. They're like broken in from the factory now, like people always wanted them to be. And uh, the, with the single detent, I think they're right up a lot of people's alley now. This is something we're going to be talking about, though, on Thursday Night Knives with Edwin. He is a, 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 a real connoisseur of Emerson's. And uh, there is a point where they recently where they went from a double detent system to a single and uh, there, I, I want to have some controversy. No, I want to have some debate over which is better because uh, my initial thought was finally they went to single detent and I can just flick this thing out with my thumb and that's important. But there's something so pleasing uh, now to me about the older double detent system, the pre-2016, I think it is, and the way that feels and the stability of it. So we're going to we're gonna talk about that uh, tomorrow. So this Emerson Appalachian... Uh, very, very uh, impressive knife. I'm very excited about it. Also, this is something I, I didn't tell you we were going to talk about, Jim, but I just want to drop this real quick. Uh, I got in touch with someone on Instagram to have a custom micarta scales made for another one of my Emersons. So this is mm. going to be the first time I've like done any sort of real tweaking. And, oh, uh, I'm excited. Okay. Uh, any real tweaking to an Emerson? To an Emerson, yes. That's oh, what okay. I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that, that definitely means it's... Uh, it's yours. It's it's going to be a keeper. I mean, if you do anything to it, it's it's not going anywhere. Exactly. And and I also insured that a few years ago when I sanded down the handles and kind of messed it up and <laughs> knew I couldn't sell it. But so well, that, that's another story. We didn't have to we didn't have to mention that. But we won't uh, get it. Yeah, right. Speaking of speaking of buying and selling, I didn't mention to you, but uh, how's everything going on uh, Blade Forums and other uh, sources of uh, buying and selling? Which, by the way, for speaking of Thursday Night Knives, that was a topic several weeks ago that we kind of talked about what uh, what places people buy and sell knives and some of their favorites. Uh, I know Blade Forums is yours. Uh, mm -hmm. How's that going? Have you put any up for sale lately? Uh, I have not, but I have purchased a few from, and, and, and as I've we been, know, <laughs> and I have been um, uh, uh, just sort of watching it and, and checking out trends and uh, Definitely. Well, okay, that sounds like a little too scientific. I've just been keeping my eye on it and noticing that um, usually what I do is I'll when you go to uh, the forum page for um, individuals, that's people like you and me selling folding knives. That's probably the most trafficked of the knife exchange pages. And I look down uh, before I click into any one um, entry. I look down at at how many people have responded to each entry and a response to an entry basically means someone's interested in their, they're asking for a PayPal address or they're asking for, you know, mm -hmm. more pictures or something like that. And, uh, the count has been zero for way more entries than pre pandemic, right. Right. you know? Um, so it does seem like some buying has slowed down as, mm -hmm. as one would expect. Right. Um, so that is interesting. And then and then I'm always interested to see which ones have a lot of responses. And lately people are people seem to be uh, going for the hinderers. Uh, and um, I mean, that's I guess that's kind of a constant. And then there's also a, an entire um, Chris Reeve a forum mm. that doesn't seem to have slowed down. Right. So there are certain certain brands that just hold their striders, you know, hold though around, yeah. some of the striders, man, are so expensive. They don't seem to be going as as quickly on the secondary market in blade forms, just from my own observation, right. as uh, as things like hinderers and and uh, benchmades and and mm. and some other more more affordable. Not right. that hinderers are affordable, but you know what right. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting well, a seven hundred dollar Strider. Well, it'd be interesting to hear. Um, you know, where do you buy and sell knives? Have you noticed any? Trends? Have you noticed uh, prices coming down any? Maybe going up some? Uh, give us some feedback. Uh, shoot Bob an email at bob at thenifejunkie.com or better yet, call the listener line, the Knife Junkie listener line. That's at uh, 724-466-4487. And also, are you having a hard, harder time selling knives that you know ordinarily would, would mm, go quickly? Go, that's a good point. You know. 
maybe maybe not go for as much as you would want them to go for kind of what is what you're saying yes yes yeah. and also types of knives like are you finding it easier to sell your tactical knives right now and your and your prettier anodized knives maybe aren't aren't going as quickly uh, mm -hmm. just just interested to find well out. it's not the zombie apocalypse bob it's just the <laughs> coronavirus so maybe the tactical well, yeah but you know yeah. you know people All get right. in a mindset or All right. you know some people do <laughs> I not naming names <laughs> All right. Uh, another new knife that uh, came into your hands you want to talk about? Yes, yes. This is my first knife uh, from the Pass Around group uh, that I was invited to join um, on Thursday Night Knives a few weeks back. It's the Apex Pass Around group, and a lot of uh, your YouTubers that you know and love uh, find or, or get their advanced copies of their knives uh, to discuss from this group. And it's a it's a great resource for people so that they don't have to buy every single knife, but they have a chance to review a lot of them and get their hands on them and really, you know, get a sense for them. So I just got the Finch Runtley. Finch Runtley. Finch is a company, uh, a, a U.S. company. I believe they're out of Kansas. And uh, I think it's two families that have created this uh this knife company and they're making two different uh, or three different models of knives right now. And they're all kind of, uh, you know, one of them is a, a little more tactical. Uh, the one that I have, the Finch Runtley is a little gentlemanly fat, little chunker EDC flipper worn cliff. Uh, people might be familiar with it at this point. There have been a number of videos on it, but if you look at it, uh, while it's open, it looks kind of like a wedge. <laughs> it's got a really cool shape. And at the wider point of the wedge, that's where the Warncliffe blade is. And uh, it's got a nicely uh, uh, flat ground blade. Uh, it's a, I would call it a saber ground blade because it starts about halfway. And uh, it comes to a quite a fine edge. And it's got a very acute but robust tip. You know, as I always talk about, especially with Warncliffe's like like my Yojimbos, uh, I have a tendency to, to drop them just the wrong way, like I did with my new Hinderer Warren Cliff, just the wrong way so that it dings the tip off. Well, the way they've done, the way they've designed the Finch Runtley, it really looks like that tip could handle me. <laughs> it looks like it could. <laughs> it could it well, could let's not try it. <laughs> yeah, let's not try it. But not, not with a pass around knife anyway. But, um, so what that also says to me is that it's going to be great for uh, the kind of uh, exacto knife draw cutting mm, and, right, and very right, right. Uh, sort of exact cutting you might need. But also you, sh you could slash open endless boxes with this sucker. And I haven't cut through cardboard with it yet, uh, but I will give it a try and see how it does with that. But it's just a cool, cool little knife. N690 steel. I saw N690. It must be made in Europe, but it's made in China somewhere. Not sure where, but it's... It's really, really beautifully made. I don't know. Might be best tech or might be artisan. Who knows? I don't know. It feels great, though. But I'll do a little review of this before I send it along to the next uh, person. And the great thing about these pass around groups or about this pass around group is once the knife has gone through all the hands it's going to go through, oftentimes the company will donate it and do a giveaway. So it's mm. a, a cool little feature. Yeah. All right. Well, you can look for that uh, video on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And uh, we will also, Bob, try to uh, maybe get a picture of it and uh, put it in the show notes for uh, this oh, yeah. episode, thenifejunkie.com slash 117, thenifejunkie.com slash 117. We'll uh, try to get a picture of that in the show notes as well as the uh, Emerson Appalachian that you uh, talked about a couple of minutes ago so uh, folks can can see those two knives. All right. As we uh, wrap it up, you kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but again, want to mention Thursday Night Knives. That's the live video show. And that's every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow night's show, if you're listening uh, when this podcast drops, is th June 4th. Thursday Night Knives on June 4th. And uh, you mentioned uh, your buddy Edwin. It's going to be on there. Definitely yeah. uh, an Emerson aficionado. Oh, man. I mean, his collection. I asked him. I, I think he's got over 100 Emersons, which, um, you know, if you're not into Emersons, <laughs> <Mind blown. laughs> you're like, why? But to me, I, I can see going down that rabbit hole. I mm. mean, I've been down a, a similar 
rabbit hole recently. So holes. Yeah. Plural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a uh, Thursday. Yeah. What can you say following that? <laughs> Thursday Night Knives, uh, June 4th. Special guest uh, co host Edwin uh, will be on to talk about Emerson Knives. But as we've had in the past couple of weeks, uh, several other folks have joined in during the show. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you would like to join in, certainly, certainly, certainly welcome to do that. You don't have to have any kind of elaborate setup if you have a webcam on your computer. Or the beauty of what we're using, our program, uh, is that you can join from your smartphone. Uh, you have the audio of, you know, and the video, great video, using your smartphone. So if you just want to pop in for five minutes and uh, maybe show off one of your Emerson knives or lend some, uh, some value to the show by talking about what you know about Emerson, we would love to have you. So again, that's Thursday, June 4th, 10 p.m. on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. But also, uh, that's every week, Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern. And we mentioned uh, Edwin will be the guest. He he goes by K-A-L-O-P-R, Calopr on Instagram. So you can check him out. Check out his daily, uh, multiple daily uploads of his Emerson. Multiple daily uploads. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we got to get you a little better on that uh, multiple daily uploads know, on your Instagram. <laughs> Knifechunky.com slash Instagram. If you're an IG or why don't you uh, get on there and shoot Bob a, a message on Instagram, however that works, and say, hey, Bob, where's the picture today? <laughs> get right. off your ass. <laughs> That's right. Take a picture. Put it up. So anyway. All right. A lot of stuff, Bob, this week as usual, man. Uh, final thoughts, final words? Uh, I, I just have to say going into summer, I'm so excited to be uh, taming taming the wilderness right outside my door and and getting my knives out there and uh, just kind of bashing around and have fun. I'm just very excited for summer. It's a beautiful day outside. And, uh, yeah, everyone get out there and enjoy yourself and enjoy your knives and enjoy the great outdoors. Yeah, enjoy the outdoors. Everybody's been uh, so uh, cooped up at home with a lot Mm -hmm. of the stay-home orders and that kind of thing all across the country. Uh, Please, though, be continue to be careful. Continue to, you know, wear your face coverings. uh, Keep that social distancing going on. We don't want to everybody rush right back out and then we get a uh, second wave that's, uh, that's even worse. Oh, yeah, man. I'm not talking about looking at people. I'm talking about being in the backyard, brother. Cutting vines <laughs> with your dedicated vine cutting knife. Cutting vines and listening to history podcasts. Yeah. Ooh, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've run out of words on this episode of the Knife Chucky Podcast, episode number 117. So thanks again for joining us here on the podcast. Uh, please give us a like, uh, give us a comment, share this podcast with someone that you know that uh, is a is a knife lover like yourself, we would uh, certainly uh, appreciate that. That's one of the the easiest and best ways to show your support of the Knife Junkie podcast, and we certainly do appreciate that. So for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife noob over here, Jump Person, thanking you for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.